these are an important class of integral domains and they have a good relation with the principal ideal domains and unique factorization domains so let us start with defining euclidean domains so we start with an integral domain d and if there exists a function denoted by small d from d minus 0 to the set of natural numbers starting from 1 such that it satisfies two properties the first one for any two non-zero elements a and b in the integral domain if d of a is less than or equal to d of a b and again for any two elements a and b in d such that b is non-zero there exist elements q and r in d such that a is equal to bq plus r where either r is zero or the function value of uh, d at r is strictly less than the value of d at b then if such a function exists then we call d to be a euclidean domain So let us look at the examples. So the first example is that of the ring of integers z. It is a Euclidean domain with the function d defined as d at a is equal to mod a. Then in the next example we consider a field f. Then the polynomial ring fx which is an integral domain is a Euclidean domain. And the, uh, the function d is defined as d of a polynomial fx is nothing but the degree of fx. Uh, let us look at one more example. So the ring of Gaussian integers noted by zi it consists of elements of the form a plus bi such that a and b belong to z. This is a Euclidean domain and the function d this is defined as a plus bi is equal to a square plus b square we will now look at some important relations between euclidean domains principal ideal domains and uh, unique factorization domains so the first result says that every euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain so let us prove this result. So the proof. So we consider a Euclidean domain D. So and uh, we have to show that this D is a principal ideal domain. So we let I be a be an ideal of d, d so case one the, f the first case is that if i is zero okay then clearly i is generated by zero okay and we are done so the second case is when i is non-zero okay so because i is non zero so so among the non zero elements among the non zero elements of i we choose an element a such that da is minimum so because there is uh, since i is non zero so there is at least one non zero element and uh, now among all the non zero elements of i we choose an element a so this is a non zero element such that the value of d at a is minimum so this we can choose by well ordering principle so we claim that i is generated by a so clearly 
the ideal generated by a is contained in i right because if suppose uh, say c belongs to ideal generated by a then c is equal to a into c1 c1 belongs to d and because i is an ideal so this belongs to i and hence c belongs to i so this is contained in i and uh, uh, now we have to show that i is contained in the ideal generated by a so we let b belong to i okay and b is a non zero element clearly if b is zero then b is contain uh, b belongs to ideal generated by a so we let b to be non zero so then because uh, b belongs to i and i is contained in d and uh, d is what d is an d is a euclidean domain so by the definition of euclidean domain there exist elements q and r such that b is equal to a q plus r right where either r is zero or dr is strictly less than da so this implies r is equal to what b minus a q and because b belongs to i and a q also belongs to i so this implies that r belongs to i so if dr is strictly less than da then this contradicts that a is the uh, element with uh, such that da is minimum so dr less than da is not possible and hence this implies r should be equal to 0 right so this implies b is equal to aq and b belongs to the ideal generated by a because b was arbitrary element this implies i is contained in ideal generated by a and so this implies i is equal to ideal generated by a because both sides the containment holds and hence every euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain this result easily follows from what we have previously done it says that every euclidean domain is a unique factorization domain now because any euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain this we have just now seen and every principal ideal domain is a unique factorization domain and hence this result follows you can uh, remember this relation uh, with the uh, first alphabet in each of these terms okay so because e comes first so ed implies pid because p comes after d e and then u comes at the last so ed implies pid implies ufd however the converse need not be true so ufd need not imply pid need not imply ed so uh, an example of ufd which is not a pid is zx it is a ufd but not a pid now let us go to the next result so the last result says that if d is a unique factorization domain then dx is also a unique factorization domain so the ring of polynomials of a unique factorization domain is again a unique factorization domain uh, there is no proof of this result so now we look at an example of an integral domain that is not a unique factorization domain okay so example so we consider the ring z root minus 5 okay so it consists of elements of the form a plus b under root minus 5 where a and b belong to z so this is a commutative ring with unity unity is 1 and uh, clearly it does not have any zero divisors uh, so it is an integral domain however it is not a unique factorization domain this we shall see so 
first of all we define a function n define this function from z root minus 5 to the set of natural numbers that is 1 2 and so on okay so now we define n as n of a plus b root minus 5 this is equal to a squared plus 5 b squared so one can easily check that nx into n of xy this is equal to nx into ny where x and y belong to z root minus 5 also we shall show that nx is equal to 1 if and only if x is a unit in z root minus 5 let us see why this result holds so if nx is 1 and we let say x is equal to a plus b root minus 5 and then this implies a squared plus 5 b squared is equal to 1 okay so because b is a uh, is an integer so if b is any integer greater than or equal to 1 then b squared would also be greater than or equal to 1 so 5 b squared will, would be greater than or equal to 5 right so this uh, equation would never hold so this equation would hold only when b is equal to 0 now let's see what we are left with we are left with a squared is equal to 1 when b is 0 so this is on, uh, this only holds when a is equal to plus minus 1 okay so we get x as plus minus 1 clearly plus minus 1 is a unit so x is a unit in z root minus 5 this implies x is a unit 1 is a unit because 1 is its own inverse and similarly minus 1 is also its own inverse so minus 1 is also a unit now let us see the converse now let x be a unit and um, we suppose that x inverse is the multiplicative inverse of x in z root minus 5 okay so this implies x into x inverse is 1 which implies n of x x inverse is 1 is n of 1 what is n of 1 n of 1 is nothing but 1 squared which is 1 so because n of x y is equal to n x n y so this implies n x n x inverse this is 1 now because n is a function uh, whose codomain is the set of natural numbers so this is also a natural number and this is also a natural number and the product is 1 so when would this equation hold this would only hold when both of them are 1 right because if uh, any of these is greater than 1 in se koi bhi agar suppose 1 se different hai to uh, suppose agar hum nx nx jo hai wo koi k hai which is different from 1 okay k nx is equal to this hmm. so hame kya mila k into nx inverse is 1 to so, nx inverse kya gaya this is equal to 1 by k ab kyunki k different from 1 tha to k strictly greater than 1 hoga right kyunki hum natural numbers ki baat kar rahe so ye kya ho gaya strictly less than 1 ho gaya to ye kabhi bhi natural number mein belong hi nahi karega to isliye in dono ko 1 hona padega this implies nx is equal to 1 and uh, we are proved so now we consider the element 46 so consider 46 and uh, consider its two factorizations so 46 is 2 into 23 and also it is equal to 1 plus 3 root minus 5 into 1 minus 3 root minus 5 you can multiply and check that this is equal to 46 so we claim that each of these uh, factors 2 23 and these two factors these are irreducible so uh, irreducible over z root minus 5 
so suppose that 2 is equal to x y where x and y belong to z root minus 5 z root minus 5 okay so and we suppose that x and y are non units so then 4 which is equal to n of 2 which is equal to n of x y it is equal to n x n y right so this implies n x n y ko kya hona padega because n x n y natural numbers mein to n x or n y dono ko 2 hona padega so n x is equal to n y is equal to 2 so this is not possible impossible kyun hai kyunki n x agar x suppose a plus uh, b root minus 5 hai to n x is equal to n of a plus b root minus 5 ye kya hota hai this is equal to a squared plus 5b squared ab kisi koi bhi aisi values nahi ho sakti a aur b ki jiske liye ye 2 aa jaye right to kisi bhi x ke liye nx 2 to nahi ho sakta to ye cheez hold nahi karegi and this implies x uh, or y is a unit so similarly if we write uh, 23 as some xy where xy this factorization is non trivial then n23 would be 23 square is equal to n of xy which is equal to nx ny so this is equal to nx ny ny so nx or ny ko kya hona padega 23 Right, 23 is equal to nx. Now, फिर से जिस तरह से हमने यहाँ पे nx is equal to 2 के लिए देखा, similarly nx is equal to 23 is not possible. Hmm. So again, similarly we can apply this argument to 1 plus 3 root minus 5 and 1 minus 3 root minus 5, and uh, we get that these are two irreducible. Uh, these are two factorizations where the factors are irreducible and hence. Z root minus 5 is not a unique factorization domain.